Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith and today I'm going to do a slightly longer video than normal and that's because I'm going to be covering all of the new features in Oracle SQL Developer version 18. So that's everything that's new in version 18.1, 18.2, and 18.3. And at the end, if you want to skip all the way to the very end, I'll give a preview of what we're working on for 18.4 and what we have planned for calendar year 2019. So if you don't know who I am, if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, I'm the product manager for Oracle SQL Developer. I can be found online in many different places. This is my contact info, my Twitter handle, the uh, website for my blog. I'm happy to do these types of presentations for your group and company. Just find me somewhere and ask. I also do tips and tricks and tons of other types of presentations, so it doesn't have to be uh, the what's new stuff. I'm the product manager not just for SQL Developer, but also for SQL CL, SQL Developer Data Modeler, Oracle REST Data Services, and our newest SQL Developer product, Oracle SQL Developer Web, which is available in the Oracle Cloud. You're here now seeing this video. I have more. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you'd like. But I've got videos, most of which are in the 10 minute or less zone. I do have a few of these that are in the hour. Zone, if you want that complete show me everything type of take. So SQL Developer has been around for about 13 years. We release quarterly now. We have an extremely wide user base, so 5 million users worldwide. And in 2018, we're tracking to have more than a billion SQL worksheets opened and used to work with Oracle Database. So I think that's a pretty cool number. If you're not sure what SQL Developer is, this is in a nutshell, a very large nutshell. It's the IDE for the PL SQL language in the database. It's also a scratch pad for working with queries. It's a graphical user interface interacting with your database. It has a reporting module. It has a data modeling feature. We have a slew of features for database administrators. It's the platform for migrating your non-Oracle database to Oracle database. It's an IDE and administration interface for Oracle REST data services. And we offer a command line interface, uh, which is SQL CL. SQL CL isn't new for this year. We released it about two years ago. But just in case uh, it's new to you, it's everything you liked about SQL Plus and SQL Developer um, combined. It's a 20 megabyte uh, Java application. doesn't require an Oracle Home or TNS Names file. You can unzip it and run right away as long as you have an Oracle 8 JRE. It offers inline editing, uh, query script history. You can write your own custom commands using JavaScript if you'd like. Uh, we have automatic output formatting so you don't have to um, uh, spend a lot of time trying to make your query results readable. And we have new commands, uh, and it's just a modern take on SQL Plus really is what it is. And it's shipped with SQL Developers. So if you go to the SQL Developer bin directory, you will see a SQL uh, bat file or executable there that you can call to start it. SQL Developer Web was released in the Oracle Database Cloud this year, and it is a, a browser-based version of SQL Developer for working with your database. It's powered by Oracle REST Data Services, you get a fully functional SQL worksheet. You can run queries, use the query history, the formatter, the parser. The insight features are all there. Drag and drop. We make it easy to get make it easy to get your query results out to the formats that you want. Uh, it also supports um, database diagramming, so you can reverse engineer your uh, data dictionaries. You can save those out into reports, into the diagrams, and we can generate DDL from those. We also give you uh, create and edit object dialogues. We give you some instance management features, and there's also a non-flash uh, interface to real-time SQL monitoring. So lots of cool things there. And for much of 2019, that's going to be our concentration, is bringing more and more features to SQL Developer Web. So if we start back in the beginning of time, uh, SQL Developer was released, uh, I think, in December of 2005 as an early adopter. It was known as Raptor. And then over the next 10 years, we had one to two releases a year. 
and we would bump the major version number when we thought the occasion called for it. Um, but 4.2 was the last release on that numbering scheme and that release pattern, and that happened uh, last spring. So not that long ago that we moved to these quarterly releases. And now every three months we put out a new version, so it's the year and the quarter. So we've had 17.2, 3, and 4. We've also had 18, 1, 2, and 3. Um, I'm running version 18.3 right now on my machine, and we're working right now for 18.4 to release at the end of the year. Instead of asking you to read all the release notes uh, for all those uh, versions, I thought I would put together this video and just step you through the highlights. So we started off with rebuilding the welcome screen in SQL Developer which is probably one of those screens that most of you just close right away. There are a few features in here that are of use for both new people and uh, experienced wizards. So if you're brand new, um, if we can find a TNS names file, we will go ahead and print out the entries here. And if you want to create a connection on one of these entries, you simply cl um, click on this. You also notice if you mouse hover over it, it will show you what the connect stream looks like. So these look like local databases, and there's the service name. So if I click on this, you can see the um, it's added to the connection tree. And if I right-click on the properties, you'll see that I'll need to add a username and password to get in. And then I'm off to the races. Uh, if you can't find the TNS name file, let me say, if we can't find the TNS name file, you can tell us exactly where it's at and just click into it here. And you can also click this button to create a connection manually. For those of you that have been using the tool for quite a while, uh, that's probably not going to have much use to you. But we do show you the last 10 or so databases you worked with. So if you don't want to use the connection panel, you can click on one of these and we'll automatically open that connection for you. For folks brand new to Oracle and they need help just getting a database, we have links over here to go get our VirtualBox appliance, our Docker image, and our updated XE distribution. This is just based on 18C. And we have all of the social media links in here, the YouTube videos, the links to go um, learn more about the product. And if you're brand new to SQL Dev and you're not sure what it does, we do have some screenshots that just give you an idea of what the tool's capable of. If you don't ever want to see this again, you can simply click on or uncheck this show on startup and you'll never see it again. If you close it and you want to get it back, help start page. We'll bring that page back. Okay, so we've done a, quite a bit of uh, formatting updates over the last two years. Uh, the biggest change probably for um, calendar year 18 is we uh, delivered a new formatting style that you can enable. So right align keywords so if you can imagine just a line drawn down here separating your keywords and the rest of your query that formatting style is defined in the preferences Right align query keywords is on. That's how you get that. I found that you either love or you hate this preference, so uh, use it if it looks nice. If not, then uh, find something else to fit your needs. Uh, and for those of you that live on the truly Spartan side of life, uh, the formatter, you can now tell it to only touch the case of your queries. So if you've always wanted your select froms and wheres in uppercase, and you've always wanted your table and column and procedure names in lowercase, you can set that and say, just touch that and don't touch anything else. Don't add carriage returns, don't add tabs or white space, don't indent my code, don't remove anything, don't add anything. That's the convert case only switch. You can also define custom highlighting rules. So this uh, uses the parser, which powers the formatter, 
um, but it's also used to do things like adding the grammar squiggles and deciding what color text uh, your code should appear in. So again, back in the preferences, instead of under uh, formatter, under PL SQL syntax callers, we've added this PL SQL custom syntax. And we've added a few sample rules in here that you can choose to enable. So basically some folks in the community suggested, hey, it would be nice if we could have some of our instrumentation code uh, highlighted differently in the code editor so it's easier for us to see that when it's in there and also easier to ignore that and more concentrate on our actual application code. So um, we added some rules in there for DBMS output, for the open source logger package, and also for Apex debug. And I've told my copy of SQL Dev, hey, print that in pink text. Um, I'm not sure why you would do that. You probably want a gray text so it doesn't stand out so much. But I've chose pink just so it showed in this screenshot here. That uh, is not there by default. You'll have to enable that if you want. Parser assistance. So um, I'm really good at typing fast and making uh, not necessarily typos, but referencing tables that don't exist. The parser as you're typing will look for objects in the data dictionary and if it doesn't see it, it will alert you to it. So it's not an error in your code, it's just like a grammar squiggle like Office would show you. And if you mouse over the yellow, this is what it's going to tell you if we think this is the cause. So it's just a heads up, hey, that that table doesn't exist. Maybe you need to set the current session for your, or set the current schema for your session, or maybe you need to um, add the schema prefix. Or maybe you forgot to add it. Maybe you're not even in the right database. So this could help you avoid some catastrophic boo-boos. PL SQL completion. So when you invoke the parser for help on a package call, which is control space bar, we give you uh, all the code plus the um, data types and comments so you can see what's expected there, and we close out the call with a um, parent and semicolon. So you start off with this, and with the two clicks, you get to a um, much nicer um, code block. So the two options there are full and minimum. Uh, full gives you the complete package call or procedure call, and the minimum one gives you just the arguments um, that are required. Security. Uh, could we not talk about security? No, we have to talk about security. Uh, it scares us, but if we ignore this stuff, it can cause people uh, irreparable harm. Uh, we're the stewards of your data. We want to help you keep your data safe. So the parser is now also looking for uh, potential uh, SQL injection vulnerabilities in your PL SQL code. There are three specific rules or three specific scenarios where we're checking for that. Uh, you can find that documented in the release notes. I have a blog post on it. But basically, if you look into the Oracle database docs in the PL SQL uh, book, there's a chapter in there for SQL injection, and it lists the examples. That's what our parser is also looking for. So uh, if we detect the issue, so if you're appending values into a static and then executing it, we'll tell you, hey, this is where you've declared the static variable, and here's where you are adding things to it and invoking it. So we kind of paint that whole uh, timeline for you there. So you can see where it's like line two, then line 11, and then line 17. Uh, that yellow text that's highlighted there, I've added that in the screenshot. So we're not doing that in the code. What you'll see in the UI is the, the yellow squiggle here, which again is one of those grammar syntax helpers. And if you hover over that, that's where you'll see this this note. Uh, for 2019, we are looking to do a lot more in this space, uh, particularly around security and SQL injection. So doing uh, this for an entire schema, building some reports. Um, right now, you'll see this just working on um, the objects as you open them in a worksheet uh, or in the code editor, whether that be the file or in the database. The search feature isn't new, but we have uh, expanded the feature set for search. Uh, you open the search by clicking the binoculars button on the toolbar, and this allows you to search things in the data dictionary. So in 2018, 
we've added support for searching into views and materialized views. Uh, we've also added support for database 12C release 2's enhancements and PL scope. So we'll now also search into the all statements view. So if you've enabled the PLSQL compiler to um, collect PL scope information on your PL SQL, it's now tracking all of the SQL in your PL SQL, and you can ask SQL developer to search that. So when you're connected to a 12C instance under the code, uh, there's an item there called all statements. You'll just check that and we'll search that bit as well. The query builder, again, not a new feature, but it's much better now. So uh, performance is much better. Instead of taking 10, 15, 20 seconds to render your complex queries, we should be able to do it in a second or less. It's almost instantaneous. So when I say much faster, it should be much faster with three or four exclamation points there. The other interesting thing we've done in the query builder uh, to start with, we might add this just to the, the basic worksheet um, in the next release, but uh, you can paste in queries or generate your own queries uh, using Oracle joins or using ANSI style joins. And in the query builder, you can right click and say, uh, toggle that uh, to Oracle joins or toggle that to um, ANSI style joins. And then we rewrite the query for you. Again, not new, but faster. So working with Excel, and in this case, uh, you want to import data from an Excel file to a new table or to an existing table, uh, we're going to be able to read those Excel files much, much faster. So this used to take many, many seconds, and now it's just a few seconds. Why is my query slow? So not why is SQL Dev slow for Query Builder and Excel imports, but why is my query itself slow? So um, in the worksheet now, instead of clicking the explain plan button, if we click on this drop down part of the button next to explain plan, we now have the option for a DBMS X plan. So what that does is it generates that boxed red text. So if I had my query on a, um, sorry, if I had my cursor on a query invoke this feature, we go in and figure out what the SQL ID is, and then we write the um, DBMS X plane query call on that SQL ID out for you. So we just save you a bunch of typing, uh, and then you can execute that through our script engine using F5, and you get the same output you would see in SQL Plus or SQL CL if you're um, relying on X plans to get your execution plans for queries. So real-time SQL monitoring, again, not a new feature, but uh, in this past year, we've given you the ability to take those uh, graphical user interface type reports in the GUI and spit them out as HTML. And there's no flash here, by the way. So same information you saw in the GUI is now in an HTML file that you can share with others. And it should run in your browsers without having to enable Flash and bringing in that security hazard. And heck, most of us don't even have Flash installed on our machines anymore. Nested connection folders. So this um, request came from our exchange, had many, many, many people voting for it. Uh, you can have not just connection folders, but multiple levels of nested connection folders now. Uh, some of you out there have not tens, not dozens, but hundreds or even dozens of hundreds of databases that you work with on a regular basis and being able to organize those in the connection panels is a must. So now you can do that. The DBA panel as well uh, didn't support folders at all. Um, and now it also supports folders and nested folders. So you can group your database connections. You can also group your DBA connection folders connections and folders. Cloud, uh, I work for Oracle, so of course I'm going to talk about cloud a little bit. So um, new feature support um, in the past year for getting data into your cloud service was a priority for us. Uh, and we've got features along these bullet points, which I won't read to you. Let's just jump into those. So you have a uh, Excel file or a CSS file, sorry, CSS, CSV file, some sort of delimited text file data. Um, you've always been able to uh, import 
from local files into table using um, the import feature. Uh, but now we've added support for our Oracle storage service, OSS. And uh, you can reference files in your S3 style um, buckets or containers up there and uh, define your import scenarios from SQL Dev on your machine. And I have a blog post that goes into that in great detail. And if you just Google OSS SQL Dev Autonomous, uh, it'll be step by step. And it, it's actually quite nice. It helps you set up the scenarios for records that go in, for records that don't go in, for seeing the records that fail, for seeing why they fail, and also for rerunning the scenario very quickly. So that's for a single file. Uh, you can now also do it for multiple files using the cart. So the cart isn't a new feature, um, but we've enhanced the cart so you can drag not just multiple objects in there, but also multiple files and map those files using the same import wizard and saving those scenarios and then sending them off to our cloud services. Don't have a blog post on that yet. You can look forward to that soon. But these scenarios, once loaded, um, you can track in the database as your data comes in. You can see each object in the cart coming in, and you can see the log files for each. And you can see, again, what created, what didn't, what records came in, what records did not. And you can replay those scenarios. So if you've got 50 tables or 50 files that you need to bring in every week, you set it up as a cart scenario, and you say go. And uh, you're going to save yourself a ton of time. Uh, the command line interface uh, is not there yet. It's coming. So sometime next year, you'll be able to kick these cart load scenarios to the cloud using our um, SQL developer command line interface. Data pump. So uh, data pump wizards aren't new, but they've been enhanced to support cloud. And all that means is in the data pump export wizard, there's now an option to say, hey, when you're done, Spitting this file out, please copy my dumps to my OSS service and then also optionally create an import job in the cloud that will take the file out of OSS and data pump it into my um, database running in the Oracle public cloud. So data pump, very powerful, very popular. It's the easiest way to move stuff around and SQL Developers Wizard is just now setting you, helping you set up these scenarios to take advantage of that. If you have an Amazon Redshift service and you want to use that to populate or migrate into the Oracle Cloud in our uh, autonomous service that launched this year, there's a wizard for that. It's our um, Oracle Cloud Service Migration Wizard. You connect to your Amazon Redshift service. You select the schemas that you want to pull out. We uh, dump the data out to their S3 bucket. We move it into ours, and then we load those in as new tables and a new schema. Quite nice. Okay, Oracle SQL Developer Web, um, that debuted in June of 2018, so it's fairly new, although we've been working on it for quite some time. And it's gonna be a focus of work going forward. So this is where it's at today, and uh, there's a lot of new features being worked on. SQL Worksheet, so you can write queries, you can use the Insight feature, you can drag and drop objects into the worksheet and we'll generate code for you. It fully supports the SQL and Peel SQL language because it uses the same engine that's in SQL Developer on your desktop. Uh, we're just feeding these requests uh, to a REST service powered by Oracle REST data services. Um, and it's all the same code. It's, um, it's nice that we actually build all these products and we can use them together to build new products. And Oracle SQL Developer Web uh, is an example of that. Create and edit uh, dialogues are there for tables. I believe they're also there for views. We're getting ready to release new ones for materialized views, for synonyms, and uh, several other schema types. So if you're brand new to Oracle and you don't have any tooling available yet, uh, you do have a GUI in the browser. You can say, um, create for me a new table and point and click your way through it, and we'll generate the DDL for you that you can review or then just run. We have uh, a real-time SQL monitoring interface as well in SQL Developer Web, and it should look and feel almost the same as it does in the desktop. So same color scheme, same layouts, 
in the HTML exports are the exact same. That's the benefit of having developers that talk to each other. The um, console that SQL Developer runs in also has some instance management screens. So you can see for your database uh, accounts with uh, passwords that are about to expire. You can find your uh, most expensive queries. You can um, dig into your alert logs. All right, so that's what we've done in 2018. What do we have to look forward to in 2019? Uh, this was my favorite bit Conan O'Brien had back before he left uh, NBC. It was, uh, in the, some, it was called In the Year 2000, and what I'm going to do is say In the Year 2019, this is what you have to look forward to. Uh, so we want to get SQL Developer Web available in all of the Oracle database cloud service offerings, all of them. So that's what we're moving towards. Um, and we're also going to do much more work on helping you get data from your on-premise Oracle and non-Oracle databases into the Oracle cloud. So SQL Developer itself, um, the bare metal or OCI consoles for DBCS are going to get a lot of the same features that you see in SQL Developer Desktop and the things that we've done in that first version, SQL Developer Web, you'll see come into your OCI console. So when you spin up a new database in um, Oracle OCI, uh, that first initial screen that shows you, hey, your database is here and it's running, um, those are going to get a lot nicer, give you a lot more information at that very highest level. Not only is the database up and running, but here's how long it's been running for, there are things in the alert log. Um, here's where your backups stand. Um, much, much deeper insight into the instance. And then if you want to drill into SQL Developer Web, the other screens will be there. In the DevOps space, we are taking the uh, Liquid-based project and we are extending it, which we'll be sharing with everyone, of course. That's the nature of open source. Um, but we're going to make sure that you can use Liquid-based to completely control and manage every single type of object available in an Oracle schema. Uh, and then to marry that with our tools, starting with SQL CL, we will have a new command called LB, short for liquid base. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, but you'll be able to use SQL CL to um, interface with liquid base to generate those scripts and deploy those and version and all that good stuff. Um, and then hopefully at some point after that, uh, SQL Developer will come in on the back end and build some management screens and some diff reports um, that lays over top of that. So SQL CL and Liquid Base Project extension will come first, and then SQL Developer Desktop GUI um, will trail that somewhat. Always like uh, tips and tricks, and I know I've just done a great big marketing spiel for all these new features, but I thought I would end on a new feature that's also kind of a tip and trick. So in SQL CL, uh, we have these SQL formats like uh, CSV and JSON where we automatically take the output and spit it out in that format instead of you having to write custom code to do that. And we've always supported the spool command. So we thought, hey, wouldn't it be nice if you spooled to a zip file, um, we would just take the output of the query and archive that for you. So you have two options. Uh, you can spool to a zip file and then you'll get a file inside of that um, with our um, kind of temp file name in there. Or you can say spool um, the file name with the extension that you want. And that'll say write to CSV and have a CSV file inside that zip. Um, this is all documented in the online help or in the help itself for SQL CL. So um, to take advantage of this, and everything I've shown you in this PowerPoint, to know for sure that all of this is going to be in there, don't grab SQL Dev 18.1. Don't grab SQL Dev 18.2. What you want to grab is SQL Dev 18.3. If you want to grab a really big download that has everything, you can go to um, the Oracle Technology Network and look for our Developer Day VirtualBox image. If you go to the Oracle VirtualBox Appliances page, this is the database one. So this has database 18C on it. It has SQL Developer, ORDS, and Apex latest updates on it. It also has some hands-on labs. So click, 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 show me how to REST enable database. Show me how to publish REST APIs. Show me how to secure them with OAuth 2. Um, now show me how to build an Apex application. 
show me how to debug a stored procedure. So um, quite nice, lots of labs on there, all the software's on there, and we've even put in all the sample schemas in there. So it's free for um, self-learning use. Uh, you just need VirtualBox uh, software to run it, which is also um, free. To sum things up, uh, I've talked about all of these new features in great detail on my blog, thatjeffsmith.com, so go on there and look for those. Uh, if you have questions, you want to interact with me directly, you can tweet me at thatjeffsmith. If you're looking for slides like this, I have them up on SlideShare. Um, and you can find more videos, of course, on my YouTube channel, which is where you're at right now. Thanks so much for your time, and uh, happy SQL deving out there.